Good morning, I'm gonna do an incentive spirometry. So the first thing I'm gonna do is check the patient's chart. I'm gonna see if they have any operations or if they've had an operation. So um, in the steps it says to um, assess the patient and if they are gonna have an operation, operation, let the patient know before they um, uh, go into surgery or anything like that to let them know that we will be doing some exercises with them when they're post-op. So when I'm ready, I'm gonna knock on the patient's door and I'm gonna introduce myself, check the patient's ID band, and then I'm gonna wash my hands and then I'm gonna apply the appropriate PPE. So I'm just gonna wear gloves because there's, um, I don't feel like there's any splashing or anything like that. And then I'm gonna check, um, assess the patient. So I'm gonna listen to the patient's lungs and then I'm gonna listen to their breath sounds as I do it and check their vital signs. And then when I'm ready, I will let them know on how what we are gonna be doing. So here I have a volumetric exerciser. So this is just gonna help you expand your lungs, help you clear out any secretions, loosen up those secretions, and strengthen the lungs to be able to basically cough it up, any secretions. And this will help prevent any atelectasis. It'll improve the breath sounds after somebody's had a treatment or anything like that. So when I'm ready, I will get the machine ready. And with this volumetric exerciser, it comes with a chart for um, the desired um, inspiratory rate of flow, what they need to be at. And so I'm gonna check with the age, the height. And so for, I'm gonna use me as an example, I gotta be around 1900, 1850, around there. And so then I prepare this. So first before like I have the patient do this, I'd always have them sit up if they're post-op. And then I would have them maybe if, if they're uncomfortable, I'd have them with a pillow, something that they can hold on to. Um, that way it kind of gets them a little more comfortable. And then I would set this on a table in front of them or wherever they can set it to where it's sitting up like this because you don't want it leaning down because it won't get the appropriate flow that it needs. So I'm gonna instruct the patient on how to properly use it before they do it. And so I'm gonna have put this in here for them, show them how to tightly put that in. And then I'm gonna set it up to where they need to be. And then I can see where they go to. And if they can't, get, can't quite get there, then I'll set a goal for them on reaching to that point. So when I have this, I'm gonna have the patient sit with this like this. And then I'm gonna have them take a nice deep breath in and then I'm gonna have them exhale and make sure they exhale as much as they can, all that air out. And when they go to inhale again, then I'm gonna have them put a tight seal around the mouthpiece with their tongue underneath the mouthpiece, not occluding the mouthpiece. And take a nice deep breath in and when they take the deep breath in, to hold it the three to five seconds. So when I do it, I'll have them So when they exhale after they did the breath hold, we need to have them exhale away from the mouthpiece so that way they're not blowing any moisture or any air into the machine. And anytime before you use this volumetric exerciser, you always check it to make sure there's no cracks or anything around it. If there is any cracks, then we will replace it with a new machine. And so if they didn't quite get to the appropriate thing, we will start them at a lower rate and then we will work them up to where they need to be. So it says about six to 10 times per hour, just depending on the patient. If they can't quite get that strongness, um, breath a hold and everything, they don't have strong enough lungs and they feel like they may pass out, we'll only do it a few times per hour until we can get them worked up to where they need to be. So when we are done with this, we will remove the tubing from the volumetric exerciser um, you can, if they're all finished with this, you can wash it with sterile water and air dry it. You can take out the mouthpiece if you need to, like that. But if you would set it off to the side. And then with this, you can put their name at the bottom, their patient's number and the date that I gave them the machine, because they can take this along with them home and continue to practice at home to can, um, strengthen their lungs volumes. So... With that, you would sit it next to the patient if they need to do it a few more times in the hour. And you would always wanna come back and check on the patient to make sure they are doing it properly. 
that way they're not doing it on their own and then you find out that they're not getting the appropriate, um, doing the appropriate treatment with it. So when I'm done, I will reassess the patient. I will listen to the lung sounds, see if the breath sounds are um, improving, and then I'll check the vital signs. And then I would remove my PPE, and then I would wash my hands, and then I would go to um, the computer and chart on the computer what I did for the patient, and let the staff know that I did a treatment with them.